Respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be with you wherever you are. And welcome to another episode of the Sacred Nights of Fatimiyah with me, your host Ahmed Ali. For the dear viewers who didn't get the chance to view the previous episode, we discussed uh, why and we came to the understanding of why we have three narrations regarding uh, the occasion of the martyrdom of Our Lady. Lady Fatima al Zahra, peace be upon her. But before I begin the episode, I would like to uh, quote a narration by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam, where he says he was asked, "Why did you name your daughter Fatima?" He answered by saying that Allah subhanahu wa taala uh, Fatima, Fatimaha wa Fatima shi'ataha yom al qiyam min al nar. So it means that Allah subhanahu wa taala protected her and her Shia from the fires of hell. So that means that inshallah, <clears throat> if we do get closer to Fatim to Zahra alayhi salam and revive her name and revive our religion in her name, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, we seek from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from the hells of fire. So without further ado, uh, so yesterday's episode, we did come to the understanding and uh, we concluded the episode by looking at the categories uh, of measuring uh, the martyrdom of Fatima Zahra alayhi salam and how many days uh, between each occasion. But inshallah, we'll continue the discussion with my dear guest, uh, Sheikh Muntadar al Karbalai. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikhana. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for uh, uh, attending. Uh, Sheikhana, in the previous episode, as I mentioned, we did discuss, uh, discuss uh, the various narrations regarding the martyrdom of our pure lady. Um, but uh, we concluded, um, due to the shortage of time, we did conclude at a narration that you were mentioning regarding um, that the reports regarding her martyrdom can be characterized uh, through two. Uh, one, by measuring uh, the time of the martyrdom of Prophet Muhammad wasallam, and the second, which is the explicit narrations mentioned by the Imams regarding her blessed martyrdom. So if you can continue with that. Inshallah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب الله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين الذي يذهب عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا واللعن الدائم على أعدائهم أجمعين إلى الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين آمين رب العالمين We begin in the name of Allah the most beneficent the most merciful all praise be to him everlasting and omniscient and we send our peace and blessings upon Muhammad and his holy household and our eternal damnations and curses upon their enemies. Ameen Rabbil Alameen. And again as well, inshallah, we send our condolences to Sahib al-Asri wa zaman arwahana lawa al-fida on the tragic martyrdom of Sayyidah Fatima al-Zahra salam allahi alayha and to the maraja al-Ibam and to the Islamic ummah as a whole, inshallah. And yes, in the previous episode, of course, this is a quick review. We first talked about uh, the process of transcription of hadith, and mm -hmm. we reached a point until we started mentioning um, the two categories. And like you mentioned, the first category or the second category. The first category is the explicit dates from the Imams Ali Muslim, and the second category is the dates that give a span of time between the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the death of Fatima Zara sallam Allahu alaiha. And we mentioned, of course, the, the reports, and as a quick review, third of Jamada al Akhirah, which we mentioned was narrated by Abu Jarir al Tabari and Shaykh mm -hmm. al Mufid and al Iqbal, by Sayyid ibn Ta'us, and so on. Then we mentioned that there was also a narration that states of 20 of Jamada, and there was one that stated third of Ramadan, and there was one that stated 21 of Rajab. And we concluded, of course, that from these, the strongest one that appears from these three narrations, is the, in terms of Sanad and in terms of Dalala and the Matan and the content, that would be the third of Jumada al Akhir. Now let us go on to the second category of narration. The mm -hmm. second category of narration, so we have here, is the one narrated in Kashf al Ghumma, Fi Ma'rifat al A'imma, by Abi Fatih al Arbali. And he narrates this time period to be 95 days. Mm -hmm. Then we have another time period which is narrated to be 75 days and this is narrated in Kitab al-Kafi 
of Sheikh Al Kulaini, Thiqat Al Islam Al Kulaini. Mm -hmm. Then there's also a date that mentions 40 days, which is, which is found in Kitab Al Ihtijaj of Sheikh Al Tabarsi. So in the second category, we in fact have three dates. Mm -hmm. But there is something we need to make clear here. Mm -hmm. The 75 and 95 is actually one narration. And that one narration, it's actually 95 in, in the original. See, this is, this is the reason why I mentioned that uh, it's important to know a little bit about the history of transcription mm -hmm. and that being the Kufan uh, calligraphy and the Kufan writing materials and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So, 95 is what? خمسة وتسعون. Mm -hmm. 75 is what? Mm -hmm. So we see that the khamsa khamsa are found in both. Mm -hmm. Then you have the tis'un and the sab'un. So it might be... Oh. Exactly. So the tis'un, of course, is the ta and then the sin, right? And then the end is the same. Then the sab'un just starts with the, with the sin and ends with the, 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 the ayn and, until the end. So remember in the kufin, in the Kufan writing, they did not use um, dots to indicate the ta from from anything else or the ba from anything else. Mm -hmm. So they only focused by basically the writing would be exactly the same. It would look like this, and then the sab'un would look the same. And of course, the the amount of sin, the sin, is the, the basically you can say the teeth of the of the scene, of, right? Of the letter, of the letter, sorry. it would look. Three or four of them, right? Because you can't really tell. Because even if you write them without the dots, it's hard to deduce, especially with that ink and with definitely, everything, right? Definitely. So what we can say here is, in fact, the hadith that is narrated by, I mean, this is just, of course, uh, uh, a conclusion. And then, Allahu alam what the truth is. But it's a very close conclusion. Mm -hmm. That the one, the one that says 75, which is found in Kitab al-Kafi of Shaykh al so this could mean that when Al Kulaini alayhi rahmah wa rudwan, when he recorded this, the khamsatan wa sab'un, the seventy-five, he might have, with his own, he might when he when he when he, when he got the manuscript from the person that he transcribed it from, he with his own judgment, what did he read? He probably would have read it as seventy-five. Either he read it as seventy-five. Or those that came after Shaykh Al Kulaini, who transcribed his book again in the various copies we have today, mm -hmm. they reduced it as as what as um, seventy five, because we see in Kashf Al Ghumma, Al Arbali, for mm -hmm. example, let's say let's say right now I'm an Arbali and you're also with me a transcriber, for example, mm -hmm. and then I the Arbali I'm reading, and then when I'm reading, what happens? Um, I look at the, the narration that I got from my, my companions, the manuscript, and I deduce it what? As 95. And then I'm like, Ahmed, my transcriber, writes 95. And then it got transferred over the years. Very, very beautiful, but that could be one of the reasons. Because at the same time, the narration, because if you count 95 days from the Shahada of Rasulullah, you do arrive to the 3rd of Jamada. Yes. And the, this, this 95 is recorded by Imam al-Sadiq He actually, there's, one, there's two hadith from al-Sadiq There's a hadith that says, third of Jumada explicitly. Then there's also a hadith that says 95 days as well. From al-Sadiq, which has a reliable, mu'tabar, hasan, sound, chain of narration. Then also there is a narration that is recorded by al-Baqir It says 95. And there's also a narration that is recorded by Amir al Muni that says 95 days. So, of course, I mean, the only reason we're doing this is not, we're not trying to pinpoint the exact day. That's, that's Ilm al Yaqini is only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is only, you can say, Madnoon, Dhanni, Ilm Dhanni, that we're trying to conclude. And I say this now, in case the viewer that is watching us, I don't, I don't want them to misunderstand that we are trying to, we're here trying to pinpoint an exact date of the date of Sayyidina Fatima Zahra alayhi salam. No, mm -hmm. that's not our job. There's a reason why this, the divinity of Sayyidina Fatima alayhi salam lies in these nights. We're only trying to come to a closer understanding just so we can, first of all, tell the believers why we're doing this. Because every single date, either the first, the second, or third, should be, should be revived 
and each one should be revived in a higher and more massive and enormous magnitude from the other. Mm -hmm. we, they should all be revived. Not one should be left and the other one should be not left because we're not sure. We're not sure. We could, we could, technically speaking, we could, we can say that these we have 95 being the strongest, but at the end of the day, maybe the 40 would be the strongest. How do we know that at the end it's all done? It's all not that 100% yaqeen that mm -hmm. we've reached. So no, we revive all the nights of Fatimiya. We serve Sayyidina Fatima in all the nights. Her banner is raised all over the world, inshallah. Every year, same period, bin Allah ta'ala. Inshallah. So that solves basically, the, or answers the question, or why we do the three nights of Fatimiya. Mm -hmm. So we do see that there's a divine play uh, no. with, with, within uh, the exact dates. I mean, because anything that goes wrong uh, in the world, uh, there has to be something divine within it, especially the life of Ahl Bayt alayhim salam. They no. lived the life of divinity. But um, is there a connection and relation between Fatim al Zahra alayhi salam and the Knights of Qadr? Because, because we do see that there's not an exact date when Qadr is. People just assume that, you know, uh, an Imam went to worship that time or uh, to revive Little Qadr at the 21st or the 23rd. But there's no specific no, date. I no, mean, we do specific. see the relation between that. We do have narrations. But I was wondering if you can um, analyze and share these reports and narrations with our respected viewers so they can get the understanding of why does Fatim Zahra السلام, have three days or three occasions. And we see Little Qadr mm. also having three, uh, three narrations and, and three nights. There is, there is a very close and, and very close attachment when it comes to Sayyidina Fatima alayhi salam and Ayatul Qadr, as you mm -hmm. said. Before we even start to look at the similarities, and you mentioned a couple of similarities, is the hadith of Al-Baqir alayhi salam and Al-Sadiq alayhi salam. There's two hadith. Mm -hmm. and we, I have here recorded the hadith of Al-Sadiq alayhi salam. And so before we even conclude and before we even say from our own tongue, that there is a relation between Al-Layt Al-Qadr and Sayyidina Fatima the Imam السلام, has mentioned that for us. So, uh, in Tafsir Furat ibn Ibrahim al-Kufi, there's a narration that is narrated from Abi Abdullah Ja'far ibn Muhammad al-Sadiq mm -hmm. And we'll read it exactly as mentioned. إِنَّهُ قَالْ إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَاهُ فِي لَيْتِ الْقَدْرِ Allah. Then he says, so we have sent it on the night of divine decree, the Layt Al-Qadr. Laylat al layla Fatima wal Qadru Allah. Faman Arafa Fatima Hakka Marifatiha Fakad Adraka Layla Tul Qad. Wa in the Masumiat Fatima Lian al Khalka Futimu and Marifatiha. Allah. So in translation it says, The night is Fatima and the decree is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he who possesses a complete cognizant understanding of Sayyidina Fatima alayhi salam will truly have grasped the might and glory and understood the light of divine decree. Then he says, That she was called Fatima alayhi salam. Fatima and then from and then they of course from the derivation Fatima. And Fatima of course goes back to many meanings. It can go back. I mean of course we, we read that also Fatima also means Fatimaha or Fatima Shi'ataha min al-Nar, meaning mm -hmm. Allah has protected her or veiled her and her Shi'a. So in this case, we can see that the Imam is saying Fatima al-Khalq al-Ma'rifatiha, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has basically veiled. detached all of creation away from, 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 from understanding Sayyidina Fatima And that's what it is, that nobody would, could possess the degree of Ma'rifah to understand Sayyidina Fatima alayhi salam except Allah wa Rasuluhu wa Rasikhoon fi al-ilm only yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his prophets and the Imams alayhi salam have truly an understanding of who Sayyidina Fatima alayhi salam is Sayyidina Fatima alayhi salam and the night of the divine decree mm -hmm. so of, of course there's another narration by this this it says by Sadiq alayhi salam there's also one mentioned by Al-Baqir mm -hmm. that has a part where he says that Al-Baqir is trying to tell us it's like people from the beginning 
Qadr, from the beginning era of Islam until, until whenever, until the end of time, people have been confused, trying to figure out who Sayyidah Fatima alayhi is. Allah Nobody Allah. will truly understand who Sayyidah Fatima alayhi salam is. And like you said, I mean, when it comes to Layat, Layat al-Qadr, some of we have we have sayings and we have historical incidents that say, mm -hmm. for example, 19th, 21, 23. Mm -hmm. And we also have a strong, strong and strongest, right? We have the, 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 the one on the 23rd being the strongest date of Layat al-Qadr. And we still do not know which one is Layat al-Qadr. Yeah. So that's, that's the first relation. The, mm -hmm. the fact that the dates are also in confusion when it comes to Fatima and Layat al-Qadr. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. In Sayyidah Fatima alayhi salam, there lies untapped secrets, rewards, divinity, and there is a sacredness around Fatima alayhi salam that also revolves around Layat al-Qadr. Mm -hmm. Fatima alayhi salam being, I mean, we say as when we say بحق فاطمة وأبيها وبعلها وبنيها والسر المستودع فيها. What is the sir المستودع? الشيء المستودع the thing that is مستودع we say that this thing is basically the, the treasure or this thing is a depository or this thing is the stronghold so in Fa Fatima alayhi salam is a stronghold of something divine what did we say? we said that al-layla Fatima al-qadr Allah فمن عرف Fatima حق معرفتها فقد أدرك ليلة القد so we can say فمن عرف Fatima was sir mustawda'i fiha arafa sir layat al-qadr so he who understands Fatima and will understand her and understand that that secret that that is in Fatima that she is the vessel of that secret that divinity that divine affluence then we will understand what al-qadr is Allahu but now, can we understand Fatima? We cannot understand Fatima. We cannot. Because there is a hadith from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam that says, Ya Ali, la ya'arifuka illa Allah wa ana, wa la ya'arifu Allah illa ana wa ant, wa la ya'arifuni illa Allah wa ant. Meaning, O oh, Ali, no one shall truly understand you but, but Allah and me. And then nobody understands Allah truly, but me and you, and then you, but Allah and me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has spanned the ma'rifah of these in this, in this basically circle. Mm -hmm. And this circle of course spans Fatima al-Zahra alayhi mm -hmm. So Rasulullah knows, Allah knows, the Imams know. Of course the Imams know, if how come the you Askari know, alayhi salam when he talks about the hujaj, الخلق ونحن أمنا فاطمة حجتنا علينا. Yes. إمام العسكري عليه السلام knows something that we cannot comprehend. Definitely. To the fact where the Imam uttered this kalam. The Imam is the one who said روح الله الفداء إن أمنا فاطمة حجتنا علينا. الله أكبر. What does the Imam know? The Imam knows something that we do not know. Definitely. Second of all, Imam al-Mahdi al-Muntadar عجل الله تعالى فرده الشريف روح الله الفداء. When the Imam السلام, one of the signs when he speaks about his has his uprising and the vengeance, he will say, Waliya fi ummi Fatima Uswatun Hassan. And he calls her my mother, Fatima. Definitely. In my mother Fatima, there is examples. In my mother Fatima, she is a great exemplar. Why? Because Fatima السلام, stood in front of the biggest two tyrants of her time. And she stood all for one reason, to please Allah, His Prophet, and the Wilayah. She gave her fetus, she gave her rights, and she gave her ribs, and she gave her life for the sake of defending the divine covenant of Wilayah. And Wilayah, divine authority, is greater than anything. Because it's an authority that comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's divine. So Fatima alayhi salam is the greatest example of all of this. I mean, if you really want to discuss when it comes to Fatima, I mean here there are some of the ulama, there's a man by the name of Ayatollah Sayyid Adil al-Alawi. He has a book called Fatima al-Zahra, Laylat al-Qadr. Fatima al-Zahra is the night of divine decree. And in this he mentions approximately 13 to 14 
uh, reasons as to the similarity. Wow. I mean, I just wish to narrate one similarity, inshallah. I know I'm, I'm reaching close to the end of my time, inshallah. but one similarity, mm -hmm. just to quickly bring the picture closer to everybody. Laylatul Qadr khayrun min al shahr. The night of divine decree is greater than a thousand months. The tasbih of Fatima al Zahra is greater than a thousand prayers. Allah That's just one similarity. And the true answer is unknown. But why do we do this today? Why, why are we doing this? We want to bring you, me, the entire world closer to Fatima. Definitely. So when they hear what happened to Fatima alayhi salam, they will say, how can these tyrants, these mala'een, attack somebody so divine? I mean, as Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa, alayhi wa sallam states that Fatima bad'atun minni. Fatima is a part of me. Man adaha faqad adhani, wa man adhani faqad adallah. Whoever harms Fatima has harmed me, and whoever harms me has, you know, no one can harm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But definitely, the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when Fatima al-Zahra is, is oppressed, the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shakes from his anger. So we do find the relation between Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam and Day al-Qadr because both of them are, you know, they're not just divine, they're highly divine to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So inshallah, Shaykhna, inshallah. in the upcoming episode, we'll discuss uh, other narrations regarding uh, the similarities, but I would like to thank you uh, for joining us tonight. Uh, and respected viewers, thank you very much for joining us tonight. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala count us as the ones who please Fatima to Zahra and get to know her. I mean, no one can fully understand who Fatima Zahra is because we are veiled from understanding uh, her true understanding. But inshallah, we can uh, get to know her close and spread the message of Fatima Zahra salam. And for the dear viewers who didn't get the chance to view this episode or the previous episode, they can log, on, lo log in to our YouTube channel or our Facebook at Imam Hussein 3 TV. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته